It is amping up quick in the Middle East. I literally just made a video talking about the Houthis' failed attack on a U.S. naval ship. However, the Houthis have now followed up with their own attack, two of them, on a U.S. civilian ship. Let me get straight to the details and not waste your time. This is straight from Central Command. At approximately 4 p.m., Iranian-backed Houthi militants fired an anti-ship ballistic missile from Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen and struck the MV Gibraltar Eagle, a Marshall Islands-flagged, U.S.-owned and operated container ship. The ship has reported no injuries or significant damage and is continuing its journey. However, here's what's interesting, and it goes to show the tactics of the Houthis. If they realize there's one failed attack, they're going to follow up, because even though they made a successful attack at 4 p.m., two hours prior, there was a failed attack. Let me follow up what Central Command has to say about this. Earlier in the day at approximately 2 p.m., U.S. forces detected an anti-ship ballistic missile fired towards the Southern Red Sea commercial shipping lanes. The missile failed in flight and impacted uh, on land in Yemen. There were no injuries or damage reported. So again, two hours prior to the successful attack, the missile was launched, detected, but failed. But again, the main point goes to show the Houthis are now super aggressive because even though they had 60 separate targets taken out over Yemen in 16 separate locations would follow up operations conducted by the U.S. military, conducted by the British, I will stand by this. The Houthis could care less because throughout almost all of U.S. military history, it is almost impossible to defeat your enemy unless you bring in a ground invasion. So as long as the U.S. does not bring in a ground invasion, the Houthis know they're just going to fire at will. And I think the Houthis realize they're, they're wasting their time and money going after a U.S. naval ship. However, going after civilian ships, the Houthis now raise the stakes and they really can, you know, get more success on impact when it comes to their operations. But again, I find it interesting that even though they made their target hit, um, it doesn't seem like it did anything, you know, significant to the Gibraltar, Gibraltar Eagle. It looks like the Eagle, according to Central Command, continued with its journey. Now, guys, this is getting worse and worse and worse. I mean, again, I'm on day two of reporting about an attack, but this time it's successful. The Houthis have only been successful on civilian ships, not on U.S. naval ships or any other military vessels. But again, this is super significant, and it almost makes it worse that the Houthis are going after civilian vessels, ships, cargo tankers, doesn't matter. Because look, when you're messing with the world trade, um, take it as you will, I do think this could constitute means for more action. It could constitute means for war. Because again, when your iPhone 15 or whatever shoots up the $4,000 because all of a sudden these ships keep getting taken out, or you know, it's just a, a random example. But look, goods could go up because of this. There are delays in production. If one ship gets taken out or something gets messed up in trading lanes and stuff like that, it's a major significant thing throughout the world. And look, the Houthis, they just so happen to be in a very strategic area where there are a lot of shipping lanes. And the Houthis know they could take advantage of this. And not only that, um, Iran, who was the cash cow and really the generals of the Houthis, they tell them exactly what to do. Um, this is working uh, with the plan. This is the plan. As long as Iran and the Houthis could totally distract the United States away from Israel, to this in turn helps Hamas attack Israeli defense forces. Look, Iran works like an octopus. You have Iran and their tentacles go out to all of their militants over in Yemen, over in Iraq, Syria, Hezbollah, and Lebanon, and over in Palestine, Hamas. Just because the Houthis are not directly going after Israel now and they're going after shipping lanes, they're bringing more attention away from Israel so Hamas can do whatever they need to do. But nonetheless, the main target for Iran has always been the United States. And they found where they can finally get to the U.S. without causing a significant all-out war. Because if I'm going to be honest with you... I don't think the U.S. military would ever send ground troops unless absolutely backed into a corner. Absolutely backed into a corner. I repeat, they will not do it. it it'll take a significant amount of support from the United States. It'll take like all of Congress. I think it's one third of Congress has to vote on it. I don't think the U.S. is going to do it. But again, 
Um, if you do look at the history from October 7th, U.S. forces have been attacked sporadically throughout the Middle East, always linked to Iranian-backed militant groups. So um, now that this happened for two days in a row, not even 24 hours apart from the previous naval ship attack, I do expect this now to be a continuation for things to come. Unless the maritime organizations around the world could somehow find a way to either divert ships to not affect world trade or to not affect economies around the world, um, or the U.S. military is now going to get more support from other countries to finally come together and contain Yemen. But again, if this keeps happening and happening and happening, I don't know how much longer um, forces around the world are going to be okay with this because this is extremely significant. If this ship actually sustained injuries and got sunk, um, I think I would be reporting a way different story where half of the Houthi targets throughout all of Yemen were going to be taken out this month. So here we go. This is the story. I don't want to keep rambling. Make sure you guys please like, comment, leave your opinions down below to support this channel. Um, and if I look sweaty, it is snowing in Tennessee. I just went sledding. I just went shoveling. But yeah, that is the story. I will keep you guys updated. It's getting very crazy out there. It's getting very dangerous. And I really do hope the U.S. military does not go into an all-out proxy war. We are literally getting kicked out of Iraq unless the United States somehow manages to convince the prime minister and the government officials of Iraq to stay in the country. Syria has always been a very odd operation. Um, up in Hezbollah, Lebanon, I mean, Iraq... Um, Israel does look like they're trying to contain them more and more, but the U.S. has to fulfill their promise of containing all of these attacks. They've sort of been doing it by literally receiving attacks, but I don't know how much longer the U.S. military can sustain this. I mean, they're literally just wasting money at this point and trying to stop um, a bunch of Houthi militant groups who are not going to stop themselves. So let's see what happens. My prediction, there's probably going to be follow-up operations. Considering Central Command is in the area, you got aircraft carriers, submarines, everybody's in the area. Area, just waiting to attack Houthi targets. So we'll see what happens.